Place at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Breaking news this morning, the U.S. will ban the use of Chinese-owned apps TikTok and WeChat to, quote, safeguard national security. The ban on WeChat goes into effect on Sunday. Meanwhile, the ban on TikTok will happen by November 12th, but Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross says access to the app may be possible if certain safeguards are in place. This is a developing story that we will continue to update both on air and online throughout the day. Interesting, considering Oracle just won the right to take over the U.S. Right. operations here in America. So I, I thought that made game over, so I guess we'll see. <laughs> Good morning to you. It is Friday. It is September 18th. And an interesting choice of face masks over in the United Kingdom. Can you imagine? There it is. That is a snake that you are looking at. Not a snake printed mask, but an actual snake. This was seen on a bus from Swinton to Manchester, England on Monday. One passenger said she thought the pastor was wearing a funky mask until she <laughs> spotted it slithering over the bus's handrails. Oh my goodness. So transport bosses in Greater Manchester confirmed a snake was not a valid face covering. Mm -mm, the eyewitness said she found the incident really funny, adding the animal did not seem to be bothering any fellow passengers. So using a face covering on public transport is mandatory there, except for children under the age of 11 of those who are exempt for health or disability reasons. A spokesperson for the government there in Manchester said, uh, you know what, uh, government guidance clearly states this needn't be a surgical mask and pastors can make their own or wear something suitable such as scarf or bandana. And while there is a small degree of interpretation that can be applied to this, we do not believe it extends the use of snake skin especially when the skin, where they're still attached to the snake. <laughs> I just don't, um, I would be afraid that, I mean, not that I would use it, but <laughs> that it wouldn't stay there or that I would just decide to. They don't want to sit still. Yeah. Or yeah, you're worried about a yes. neck constriction of some yes. sort. Yes, I mean, I, I guess this guy's used to doing this. I don't know. <laughs> what are people thinking? <laughs> you mean he normally like walks down the street? With I guess so, like they're, yeah. They're buddies, right? <laughs> I guess so. Let's take a look at today's 9 at 9. Governor Greg Abbott says starting Monday, businesses like restaurants, gyms, and retail stores can increase capacity to 75%. But bars have to remain closed. It's devastating, but we don't know what to do next. Cheer star Jerry Harris has been arrested and charged with producing child pornography. Harris is accused of contacting a 13-year-old boy on social media and enticing him to send explicit videos. San Antonio City Council passed a $2.9 billion budget on Thursday, and it includes a bump in the police budget. Some activists are voicing their disappointment. Some of those funds that were in that police budget could have definitely gone to help that, it helped the immediate needs of our community. Council members also approved a new funding plan for the Edwards Aquifer Protection Program, the plan to mostly borrow $100 million over 10 years to keep the program going. More than 30 million cases of COVID-19 have now been recorded globally. That's according to data from Johns Hopkins University. The U.S. leads with the most infections and deaths worldwide. Bluebell ice cream has been ordered by a federal court to pay just over $17 million in criminal penalties for sending out contaminated products linked to a 2015 listeria outbreak. Hundreds of thousands of people are still without power in the Gulf Coast following Hurricane Sally. They do have crews here working. They're going to be working 24-7 to be able to get the power back on. We're still 46 days away from Election Day, but some Americans are already voting. President Donald Trump and Joe Biden are both heading to Minnesota today, where early voting begins this morning. The city of San Antonio is hoping a new interactive website will get people talking about mobility. The goal is to improve safety for everyone on the roads, drivers, bicyclists, walkers, and even those who ride e-scooters. It should be noted that David Sears caught something about wearing a python as a face mask that we totally missed. Yeah. By wearing a python as a face mask, you virtually guarantee social distancing in yes. any form or fashion. <laughs> People will step away. Good point, so, David. So great, great point. Thank you very much. Let's go outside with Live Cam. The weekend is almost here. Is this the last full weekend of summer, Justin? Yay! Mm -hmm. What about sure temperatures, is. though? 
Well, temperatures are still going to be warm, but we've got some interesting changes to the forecast. We've added a little bit of rain late on Sunday, and some of it may be tropical in nature because we have our tropical depression 22 down there in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, you notice there's not much cloud cover, by the way, here around San Antonio this morning. Don't think we're going to see much in the way of rainfall this afternoon. There could be a slight chance, especially south of San Antonio. But there's a look at the tropical depression. You know what? It still looks pretty disorganized. The center of circulation is down there to the south of all that thunderstorm activity. So it's got some organization, more organization to do before it gets uh, any stronger. But right now, winds are at 35 miles per hour, gusting to 45. And the latest track takes it north and then a hard left turn towards Texas. It could become a low end hurricane by Sunday afternoon and then weakening again as it was a little bit closer to Texas. Here's where the forecast gets a little bit tricky. How long does it hang around? Does it take another turn to the north, which it looks like it may? How close does it get to the coast? And will it bring us rain? All questions we're going to try to answer, but it may take some time. And uh, again, not much rain out there at the moment. Only about a 20% chance of rain today. Temperature is 76 degrees at the airport, and we'll see a high uh, close to uh, 90 this afternoon. With some breezy northeasterly winds, 10 to 15 miles per hour, we'll keep a 20% chance of rain in there. We're going to have much more on the tropics coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look outside with Transguide this morning. Things looking good at 410 at Bandera. We'll get back to you if we see some problems on the roads. Top stories we are following today. New details about a shooting at a southeast side apartment complex that killed one person earlier this week. The medical examiner's office has identified the man as 49 year old Frederick Buller. The shooting happened around 345 Wednesday morning in the 4600 block of Pecan Valley. Please tell us 20 year old Giovanni Benjamin showed up at the apartments with a rifle and started shooting this after getting into a fight with someone earlier in the evening. Buller was standing outside and was hit and killed by the gunfire. Officers say another man was also hit by a bullet while he slept. Benjamin was arrested at the scene and charged with murder and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. A man and his father were both able to safely escape a house fire early this morning. Right now, investigators are still trying to figure out what sparked the flames. Firefighters tell us around 3 this morning, the man's father heard a popping sound and smelled smoke at their home in the 200 block of College Boulevard in Alamo Heights. The pair looked outside the house with flashlights and noticed smoke coming from the attic. Fire officials say the flames then spread to more of the house, but crews were able to put all of it out. Right now, we're still waiting to learn how much damage was done to that home. And many hoped it would become a downtown tradition during the holidays, but the coronavirus pandemic had different plans. Rotary Club of San Antonio announced it will not bring back the ice rink over at Travis Park. Last year, the rink brought in more than 20,000 skaters. The organization said on Facebook the cancellation comes, quote, due to the uncertainty regarding social gatherings and safety. The Rotary Ice Rink opened for the first time last year near the HEB Christmas tree in Travis Park. It operated until January, January 31st of this year. In your other morning headlines, a controversial traffic stop now under investigation and a drone comes dangerously close to a medical helicopter. Thousands of turtles in the coast of Costa Rica and a story about a dog rescue that will warm your heart. Our David Sears is here. Good morning, Good morning. David. We might put a tear in your eye before the weekend starts. Aww. Really? There's a chance. Okay. okay. You can get the Kleenex out. You might need it. First off, we're going to start with the family in California. You get a lot of attention after raising concerns because of a traffic stop that ended in front of their house. And this is body cam footage from the officer. It is 19-year-old Tobias Eagles running a stop sign. The officer pursues and then calls for backup. Tobias finally pulls over in front of his house. The garage is open. Mom is standing outside. The officer gets out then asks if Eagles is on probation or parole as she takes his license. The mom said she felt intimidated by the officer and she could also be heard saying she didn't want him to be the next hashtag referring to her son. They are filing a complaint. They want the exchange on record. The officer still on the job while an independent investigation is underway. Scary moment for a medical chopper that had landed on a helipad in Michigan. And you'll see the pilot here in just a second. And you can barely see what he's doing right there. See up there? That is a drone and he's able to catch it. We'll show it to you again. Now under FFA, FAA regulations, the drone is not supposed to be within a five mile radius of any emergency landing zone. And there are way too many bad things that could happen because of that drone. 
one, it could have done damage that then grounded our helicopter and made it, you know, unusable to perform patient transports. It could have disabled those and it could have caused a loss of control of the aircraft leading up until a crash. The good news is nothing like that happened in this instance. Unfortunately, the FAA not having any luck tracking down the owner because the drone was not registered. It happens every year, but it's still an unusual sight. Thousands of sea turtles coming ashore on the coast of Costa Rica. They're nesting. This happens in September. Usually there are a lot of people around, but not that many folks this time because of the pandemic. So those who were there were asked to social distance. You think maybe the turtles were happy that not a lot of people were gawking at them while they were nesting? Probably so. All right, here is your awe and tearjerker moment of the day. This is Central Arizona. This is one of those project canals, and yes, that is a lot of swirling water you're going to see. And there's a dog huddled up on the ledge right there. See the dog at the ledge of one of those dam gates. Sergeant Jason Gilchrist of the Maricopa County Lake Patrol spotted the pup while he was actually searching for another person. Gilchrist was trying to figure out how to get the dog. When she fell in the water, the sergeant thought the dog was going to drown. So he got one of his workers to lower the dam gate so the dog could get back on the ledge. Then he called a buddy of his, Deputy Ed Philpot, who just happens to be an expert at repelling. And there he goes. He got the dog, got the harness on the dog. And then Gilchrist was able to pull that dog to safety. Not the end of the story. Gilchrist figured, hey, if they took the dog to the Humane Society, somebody's going to adopt it. So he told his wife. I told my wife, I said, we're going to adopt this dog. We're just going to do it. Might as well adopt it myself. So there you go. They did. And Lucky now has a new home. Uh, very, Lucky's very lucky. Yes, look at, look at you see the pictures of Lucky. Yep. Lucky and his, you think Lucky's happy now? Very, very happy. Lucky will I, stay away from damn gates. Oh, I hope so. We're yep, glad he's okay. So, Especially if the new story. fur dad has anything to do with it. Oh, right? yes, yeah. yes. Yep. Get out of the way. You can see that big dog. Lucky, look at that will, dog. Lucky will be safe now. He made it look easy repelling down there real quick and getting uh, Lucky all harnessed up. Healed. Aww. That's good. Thank you very much, David. All right. 910, 76 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. And a few weeks ago, we gave your kiddos some coloring homework. And today, we're going to show off their creations on the air. You're not going to want to miss it. Mural dedicated to bringing awareness to domestic violence has been painted over. How you can help San Antonio Cultural Arts find a mural, the mural, a new home. Later in our newscast. And we're going to be looking at LaSalle County and let you know why the southern border is a little crooked. We're going to talk about it coming up. And taking a look at stocks, we are down 53 points. We'll be right back after the break. 914, Justin Horn has spent years looking at the stories behind town names, but along the way, those deep dives into history have opened up more geographical mysteries. One such mystery was brought to our attention by a viewer, Ken Hummel. And while you may not catch this oddity at first glance, it is curious, and it sent Justin digging through the state archives to find the answer. When Stephen F. Austin's map of Texas was completed for the first time in 1837, those who worked on it probably never dreamed that a meteorologist would be marveling at the work from deep inside the General Land Office more than 180 years later. Yet, that's what's happening here. There's 35 million documents. It started with Austin's incredible work, and now there are tens of millions of files, each documenting land ownership and boundaries in this archive in the Texas General Land Office, located in the state's capital. And it took coming here to solve the mystery of nearby by LaSalle County. It turns out that the southern border of the county is, well, Catawampus. It seems to go askew for no apparent reason. Most of us would probably never notice, but there it is, not a perfect rectangle like its neighbors. At first blush, we thought perhaps it had to do with the town of Encinal. Maybe the line juts south to keep the town from spilling over into Webb County. But if that were true, it's lost on the residents of Encinal. In fact, no one seemed to know why, which brings us back to the general land office. Within our files, uh, we'll see all sorts of errors, mistakes that happen. After doing some significant digging, it was a mistake that led to the angled boundary, says James Harkins of the general land office. It's just this mistake was pretty dramatic. Usually we don't find too many that are this, maybe this big of an error. As the story goes, the drawing of the county line required two surveyors. One surveyor, G.H. Mills of LaSalle County, was there as planned, but the other surveyor from Webb County didn't show up. 
So Mills had to navigate this rugged brush land alone. Back then, uh, the land was surveyed by pulling metal chains as opposed to GPS. All alone with snakes, mesquite, and extreme heat. It only took one wrong calculation. You have to make sure that all that the math adds up. And come on, who hasn't been tripped up by some algebra in their life? An equation that makes LaSalle County unique. It's very cool, Justin. <laughs> and then I had to say, yeah. I know that was a quick glimpse of the video of the snake. Yeah. <laughs> right well, there. And, and it seems like such a trivial thing, right? Like right. This, this angle boundary. But it was sort of interesting to jump in there. I ain't jump into sort of the details behind it. And there are other counties and other boundaries like that where, you know, mistakes happen. I've never noticed it. I didn't either. Justin, have you ever thought about becoming a reporter too? Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> listen, I was trying to be Dylan Collier on this one, like really dig deep into the files to figure it I, out. I guess we all wear different hats at times, yes. right? Yes, no, you did a great job. That Thank was you awesome. very much. Uh, was it was awesome. fun. We got a couple more stories coming up, by the way, with some more town. I'm looking forward to it. Yep, uh, we got to jump in the junior meteorologist now. We've got uh, Callie. She's in the, uh, she's eight years old. She's in the third grade. Take a listen. Hi, I'm Callie, and August has been a hot month. Today's in the hundreds, and I, but I'm loving the sunshine. Bye. Yay. <laughs> you get the little jump in there in the end. She's like, I'm loving the sunshine still. I, you know, That's cool. It was it, when she recorded this. It obviously, was in, in the triple digits, and you know, it was nice to see some sun. It'd be nice to see a little bit of cloud cover too. It and, would. Yes. I think we're ready to say bye to summer, right? <laughs> uh, I think I, I agree. think we all sort of mm -hmm. agree with that. And, and get some rain in here. Take a look at the numbers for the rainfall: 2.50 for the month of September. That's a little over half an inch above the average. And uh, as we look for the year, look at the year: 17.6. That's about five inches below the average. So, yes, we could still use a little bit more rainfall. We got some yesterday, not a lot at the airport, but spots around San Antonio got some decent downpours. And as you went south of town, the rain was fairly plentiful yesterday. It was great to see. 76 degrees right now, partly cloudy. North northeasterly winds at about 12 miles per hour. Cloud cover right now, it's, it's not there. Sunny skies here in town. We've got a few clouds down there in Wilson County. 77 New Braunfels, 75 in Seguin, 70 right now. Bernie Stage. 68 Rock Springs, 73 Valde, 73 in Del Rio. Dew points, eh, they're still up there. It's still in the muggy category, but they're on their way down. I think we're going to see some lower dew points today, and by tomorrow, you'll really feel the dry air. I think we could get some dew points in the 50s. That's going to make for some nice mornings ahead, or at least Saturday and Sunday morning. Uh, it'll feel a lot better. Here's a look at the dew point tracker, and those dew points do fall off. This says low 60s. I think it's possible we can dip into the 50s this weekend before those numbers come back up. And the reason for that is it does look like we'll see some tropical moisture potentially working its way in here. In the meantime, forecast for today, about a 20% chance of rain 2 p.m. through 5 p.m. Certainly can't rule that out, but I think it would be south of San Antonio. Best chance will be And temperatures still hot today, up around 90 with some breezy northeast Julie winds. Okay, let's talk about tropical depression number 22. Uh, there you see it uh, churning out here in the Gulf of Mexico, some pretty deep thunderstorm activity. Not over the center, though. The center is actually down here, so this is a lopsided storm. It's getting sheared a little bit, and that tells you that it's not well organized yet. Could become better organized today. Right now, winds are at 35 miles per hour, gusting to 45, and it's moving north-northeast at about 6 miles per hour, so in the, this general direction. Uh, but what happens is we get into the weekend, starts to take a turn. In fact, it takes a hard left turn towards Texas. This could become... Uh, well, a strong tropical storm by early Sunday morning and then potentially a low end hurricane by Sunday afternoon. Winds at 75 miles per hour. At least that's the latest forecast from the Hurricane Center. After that, there are a lot of questions. Uh, it'll get close to the Texas coast and then may turn north again as it gets picked up. But the question is how close will it get to the coast and how far inland will it throw rain? I know we would love to see some rain out of this. Obviously, we don't want any strong winds or anything like that, but some rain would be nice. Here's a look at some of the rainfall potential. Now, keep in mind this is subject to change, but we could be talking about up to 10 inches there along the immediate coast. And then as you work inland, one to two inches, San Antonio potentially half an inch to an inch maybe, and then it really falls off as you get out into the hill country. There's going to be a huge gradient here between who gets a lot of rain and who doesn't. But right now, the coast uh, is in line to get some very heavy rainfall out of this. Here's another look at a computer model that shows this system moving north. And then the region it moves west, we have a ridge of high pressure that briefly builds in and shoves it to the west. 
and then it moves out of the way and that's why it would go back north again. But this does show clouds and rain over San Antonio on Monday. And I think as it stands right now, Monday is probably our best chance for rain for some of those tropical downpours. If we're going to get them. Here's forecast for today. 90 degrees, 20% chance of rain, lower humidity tomorrow, 89. Saturday looks nice. Most of Sunday looks pretty nice too, although we're going to throw some rain chances in there late now. Some of that tropical moisture could be moving in. And then a 40% chance Monday, 30% chance Tuesday. We have lower temperatures way down into the low 80s. And if things continue as they are, we may get to raise those rain chances Monday and Tuesday. Wouldn't it be wild if we get a summer's worth of rain right as we're wrapping up the season, Justin? That <laughs> seems to be how it always goes. Mm -hmm. It's feast or famine around here. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yep. 921, 76 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, it's time for the KSET Kids Art Project. We're going to take a look at some of the masterpieces we've already received and tell you how your kiddos can take part. And welcome back, it's 925. So a few weeks ago, we asked you to have your kids color in a picture as part of a collaboration with the San Antonio International Airport and then to send it to us. Almost forgot all about this. Well, this morning, <laughs> we wanna take a look at some of the pictures that have been submitted so far to us. Here is Avery, Aww. seven years old. Very colorful picture there with the airliner all colored up, ready to go there. Very cool, yeah. There's Tro there. Kind of a tropical. Oh, and this, is, there. And this is uh, v Vihan, second grader at St. Peter Prince of Apostles, and looks like he chose the San Antonio International Airport to color as well. Very good. And Isabella is only three years Aww. old. Wow, somebody pay a lot of money for that. That it's is It's abstract, so cool. but it's awesome. <laughs> I can see the tower back there. So she chose the one with the city view and very colorful. You know what? That looks like Fiesta. I was going to say that looks like a Fiesta poster waiting to happen. But thank so. you to Avery, to Vihan, and especially to Isabella, only three years old. Don't forget to keep yes. sending in those pictures. Yeah, keep sending them in to KSET.com. You can find and download the coloring pages on the KSET Kids section of KSET.com. Just look for the KSET Kids Art Project Story, then take a picture and upload it to the gallery at the bottom of the article. We'll be showing off more pictures next Friday right here on GMSA at 9. But that's why it's there for your kids to do. Yeah, and it's very cool to look at. So keep sending them in. More ahead on GMSA at 9. Right now it's 926. A new San Antonio initiative helping Latinas make sure they're registered to vote. Our Eric Hernandez joins us to debrief who's behind the initiative and how you can get involved. Captain Sir Tom Moore making headlines again this morning. What he's doing now to help those who are feeling lonely. A historic mural on the city's west side is painted over. So we came to talk to the owners of that mural. And what's next? The info just ahead here on GMSA at 9. And welcome back. It's 930. A large mural on the city's west side dedicated to raise awareness on domestic violence has been painted over. The mural Breaking the Cycle was installed back in 2002 by artist Mary Agnes Rodriguez in collaboration with San Anto Cultural Arts. Alicia Barretta joins us live from where the mural used to be. Alicia, good morning. Hey, who uh, painted over that mural and why? Do we know? Yes, we do know that it's actually the owners of this building. So if viewers get a better idea, it's off of South Zarzamora and Fernando Street. And we know that the owners of the mural is San Anto Cultural Arts, but they recently found out that the owners of this building had to sell it and they did give them a heads up that they were going to have to paint over it. But now the organization is wanting to find a new home for this mural with a very, very powerful message. Vibrant art and culture are a prevalent sight while driving through the city's west side. And so the murals that you see throughout San Antonio, and especially our murals, they really are storytellers. Breaking the Cycle painted the dark reality of teen dating violence and domestic abuse. What the mural hoped to do was empower people to kind of speak up about this and to kind of tell their stories about this and to feel like they're not alone, that they're able to sort of recognize maybe themselves or see someone they love in that mural and speak up about it. The images of hope, signs of abuse, and the domestic violence hotline number are now covered in white paint. And as an organization, we had talked about possibly moving the uh, mural before this happened. And now that the um, owner wants to sell it and paint over it, which they've already done, we want to go ahead and move this mural somewhere else. San Anto Cultural Arts 
now seeks a local business owner who understands the importance of putting an end to violence at the hands of loved ones. It's something that, it's a message that needs to be relayed to, to folks and need to be made aware of, maybe even more now during the coronavirus than ever before. We want to be able to work with the business owner, with the local community, to create something, maybe not even just reproducing this mural, but reimagining it and kind of bringing it into the current atmosphere. Due to the pandemic, San Antonio Cultural Arts doesn't have a deadline for these submissions for both business owners and artists or community members that want to get involved. But they do ask that you email them. We have that email listed on ksat.com so you can reach out to them again to spread or keep alive this message of not loving in fear. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. All right, let's take a look out with live cam this morning. It is 76 degrees. Uh, not too bad, but expecting a great weekend for now. Yeah, Saturday looks uh, really nice. We're going to start off with some lower humidity. We'll see some nice mornings over the weekend, and we may end up with a little bit of rain by the time uh, we get into Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. Let's talk about some Friday night football. We do got some games going on tonight, and uh, should be really nice. Temperatures uh, right at about... Oh, 86 a kickoff and then dropping down to about 80 by halftime. There will be a breezy northeasterly wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour. And look for that sunset to be around 7, 34. Doppler radar reveals nothing this morning. We had quite a bit of rainfall yesterday, especially south of San Antonio. Some good rainfall totals. We may see a couple more showers today. Again, mainly south of town, but not expecting as much coverage as yesterday. 73 degrees, Bull Verde, 77 in New Braunfels, 74 in Hondo. And of course, we're watching very closely what's going on with Tropical depression 22 winds at 35 miles per hour right now, and this is expected to take a path in the direction of Texas. We'll get you updated on that path coming up here in just a few minutes. Forecast calls for a high right around 90, 20% chance of rain later this afternoon. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Let's see if there are any accidents showing up on Transguide. Right now, it's just construction out there at I-10 near the shops at uh, Lock and Dare, actually the Rim Shopping Center. There's I-35 at FM 1103. And yesterday morning on GMSA, we spoke about a new initiative here in San Antonio called Latina Vote, which is helping Latinos figure out if they are registered to vote or help them register. Eric Hernandez joining us live from home to talk more about Latina Vote and how Latinos are expected for the first time to be the nation's largest minority to vote in a U.S. presidential election. Good morning. Hey guys, good morning. Good morning. What are some of those projected numbers of Latinos eligible to vote as they are now the largest minority group? Yeah, those numbers have grown so much in the last 20 years. If you look back at the year uh, 2000, the uh, percentage rate was at 7.4%, but that has now grown to 13.3%. So what that means is that there is 32 million projected Latinos to be eligible to vote this election in November. And we're looking at a map now. Where are the majority of these Latino voters located at? Yeah, so they're, they're, the majority are in five states, which is California, Texas, Florida, New York, and Arizona. But the Texas Texas's twentieth congressional district, where it's showing right there, is home to three hundred and fifty nine thousand Latinos eligible voters. That's the highest of any district in the U.S. Um, and that district, of course, as you can see, is part has parts of Western Bear County in it. Um, really huge numbers, and I, I, it was kind of surprising to see that it was here in Bear County that had that largest um, amount of eligible Latino voters. Going back to the initiative, what is their main focus right now, Erica? Of course, the main focus is getting um, Latinos registered to vote or helping them find out if they have been. But I think another thing to kind of concentrate on about their initiative is how Latinas can kind of spread the word within their own network and their own community of family and friends. Um, a lot of times older generations may not have been um, eligible to vote and now are and don't know how to register. So making sure everybody in your network is um, understanding and educating about registering to vote, um, I think is kind of what they're focus focusing on right now. And we had an event earlier this week uh, trying to help people register to vote. Are there any upcoming events where people can go register to vote? Yeah, Latina Vote actually has one coming up this Sunday at uh, Cafe Azteca, which is at 359 Bustillos Drive, which is off Roosevelt on the south side. That registration event will be from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. again Sunday at Cafe Azteca. And you can find everything on our website, ksat.com, for all the up-to-date information. There's even links on there that we have that can help you register to vote online.
Uh, we, by the way, we love that picture of you uh, in the T-shirt yes, from the initiative. On, thank you. On the... I was really, I was really, um, um, I love the fact that they um, kind of brand everybody who wants to speak out about registering to vote as uh, ambassadors. And um, voting is very important in my family and has always been. And it's very inspiring, see, inspiring to see even my 90-year-old grandfather registered to vote and, and excited to vote about the upcoming election. And yep. I really want people to understand that it is important, not just for all of us. But for me as well, and for all, all our families. Well, and we just saw the picture right there again. Yep. Erica, thank you from home. Thanks, uh, have a great weekend, okay? You too, guys. Thank Bye. you so much. 937, 76 degrees. You're watching Jim SA at 9, and video of an 18 month old boy is going viral and for good reason. You're not going to want to miss his reaction to hearing his mom's voice for the very first time. Some good news this morning. You may remember Captain Sir Tom Moore, the British veteran who walked 100 laps in his garden for his 100th birthday, raising millions in the UK for COVID-19 relief. Well, he's making headlines again. He's launched a new foundation to combat loneliness, supporting those facing bereavement and champion education, among other things. Charity isn't Moore's only project, though. He's launched an autobiography and has been approached by movie studios. Moore says given the choice, he'd want David Beckham play him. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, forget Tom Hanks, David Beckham. Yes. <laughs> when uh, this year's Chicago Marathon was canceled due to COVID, sister Stephanie Baliga decided that the pandemic wasn't going to stop her from running. She ended up running the 26.2 miles on a treadmill in her basement of the convent and live streaming the whole thing. Oh my goodness, the run took a little more than three and a half hours. That's amazing. She also raised more than $130,000 for the mission of Our Lady of the Angels Food Pantry. Sister Baliga has run the Chicago Marathon for the past nine years. Amazing. Wow, she has a great pace going there too. Yes. Many parents worried about trick-or-treating during the pandemic. A man in Cincinnati found a solution to do it safely and this is what we were just talking about the other day. Oh, this is another cool. version of the candy shoot. And it's all decorated. Very yep. cool. So Andrew Beatty made a six foot long shoot from materials around his house. His plan is to attach it to his handrail. Then on Halloween night, drop candy down the chute for trick or treaters on the other side. He's now encouraging parents to try making their own candy shoot. Well, finally, they may want to grab some tissues for this story. An 18 month old boy from Virginia now able to hear thanks to his first set of hearing aids. CNN's Jeannie Mose has his adorable reaction to hearing his mom's voice for the very first time. Mason. Mason. Kids often tend to ignore their moms. Yo. On purpose, but not Mason. Yo. Say hi. Oh. At 18 months, he just got his first hearing aids. Watch him as he hears mom clearly for the very first time. Mason. Hi, can you hear me? Hi, baby. Hi, you can hear me? Behind yeah. the camera, his mom, Lauren Webb, was... bawling my eyes out. And the first time he heard me say his name, when his face lit up like that, I almost couldn't keep it together. I think I was definitely happier than he was. Reaction online was similar. Be right back while I go cry. Good job! <coughs> yeah, you can hear me! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> But you haven't heard the whole story. Mason was born almost four months premature. My big boy. After three men broke into mom and dad's place, a random home invasion. I ended up getting shot three times. Two days later, Lauren went into emergency labor. Weighing in at one pound, doctors thought Mason might not survive, might be blind, might never walk. But he beat the odds and has now been fitted with hearing aids at Virginia Commonwealth University Hospital in Richmond. They even gave him Leo the Stuffed Lion, likewise fitted with hearing aids. He's doing a lot of like yelling and just making noises because now it's kind of like the first time he can even hear himself clearly. But even hearing aids don't help when mom steps away. When have I ever left you? Why would I start today? Someday Mason will look back and listen to the first words he clearly heard from his mother's lips. Do you like how everything sounds? 
Yeah. Though audio quality tends to improve when you stick the hearing aids in your ears, not your mouth, Mason. Uh, Oh, no, 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 buddy. Genimos, CNN. New York. Oh my goodness. The grin. Oh, it got me. <laughs> I'm glad he's it got okay. Me. I love those videos pop up in my Facebook feed now and then. It's either a, a, a cute little, you know, grin like that, yes. a little acknowledgement, or it's big crocodile tears of joy hearing <laughs> mom's voice for the oh, first time. Yeah, his reaction and his cute little voice priceless. too. Priceless. Yeah. We wish him a long, healthy life, no doubt about that, and our best to his, his family. Hey, Justin, before we get to you, real quick shout out to uh, a military force that has a huge presence here in the Alamo City. Happy 73rd birthday to the United States Air Force. We salute you all. Yes, indeed. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Absolutely. Uh, This is interesting, guys. So we're going to go over to the Mediterranean, Greece. Uh, Take a look at this. This is called a Medicaid. Have you ever heard of this? No, I assume it's a hurricane-like storm somewhere over there. Exactly. Well, it's called a Medicaid because it's it's the combination of the word Mediterranean and hurricane. It's not a true hurricane, okay, but it it acts like one. So think of in the winter here when we get sort of like a bomb cyclone and the the winds really pick up and get a lot of heavy rain, sort of mimics a hurricane. That's what they're dealing with over in Greece. Pretty interesting. The winds roaring there uh, across parts of Greece. Uh, So fascinating weather all across the world. And by the way... We just got another named storm out in the Atlantic, Wilfred, but it's not the one you're thinking of, not the one in the Gulf of Mexico that we've been talking about. Uh, It is actually way out in the Atlantic. Uh, We'll get to the tropics here in just a second. Let's take a look at the satellite picture. We've got some clouds trying to move in there across parts of Wilson County. Uh, Mostly clear, though, here in San Antonio at the moment. We're going to see enough sun today to boost those temperatures up close to 90, I think. Uh, the satellite and radar shows rain out in the Gulf of Mexico. Some of that associated with that tropical depression, which is uh, sitting out there right now. But none of that has made it inland yet. And we're not looking for a whole lot of rain today. Just about a 20% chance. I'd say 2 p.m. through 5 p.m. Uh, during the peak heating hours. And that will be mainly south of San Antonio. Those temperatures up around 90. Look for some breezy winds today, too. Outside right now, we've got 75 Stinson, 76 at Kelly, 75 Randolph. And that wind, uh, it's up there, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Looking at the dew points, uh, they're high right now. We've still got dew points in the upper 60s. It's a little bit better than yesterday. We're going to go forward in time here, though, and put this into motion. And notice what happens as we get into tomorrow. Drier air starts to work in on a northeasterly wind. We're talking dew points in the 50s here. It's going to feel so much better. We're going to get a pretty dry afternoon, and then we'll see mostly sunny skies. Your Saturday looks fantastic. Sunday's going to be fairly dry, too, but we're going to have to watch what happens Sunday afternoon uh, because we could start to see some of that tropical moisture. I mentioned uh, just here, uh, within the last five minutes or so, we got the name storm out in the Atlantic. It's way out there. Wilfred uh, did get names. We have now officially gone through the entire list of names If this system in the Gulf of Mexico gets named, it would be Alpha. We're going to go into the Greek alphabet. What a year it has been. Uh, You see the storms there over top of this little system. Now, now the spin in the atmosphere, the low-level circulation, is actually down to the south, which tells us this is still a bit disorganized. But winds should become more conducive, upper-level winds, for this to develop a little bit further. Right now, it's at 30. The winds with this system are at 35 miles per hour. Going forward in time here, uh, looks like the Hurricane Center thinks this may stay a tropical storm. It could go low in hurricane uh, as it gets a little bit closer to the Texas coast, and this certainly bears some watching. This would be Saturday into Sunday. The big question here is how close does it get to the Texas coast? You see it taking a left-hand turn and then turning again off to the north. How close does it get, and how much moisture does it throw in our direction? There's a lot of factors here. If this thing becomes wound up, we may not see that moisture go as far inland. If it stays sort of disorganized, we could see more moisture towards San Antonio. Also, folks along the Texas coast are going to have to watch this very closely. If it uh, gets close enough to uh, perhaps throw some wind, some very heavy rain uh, towards Corpus or Brownsville, these are all things we've got to watch, and there's still a lot of questions here. You see how big the cone of uncertainty is with this system. One thing we're pretty sure of at this point is the heavy rain. Uh, This is the latest estimates, and we could be talking 10 inches plus Rockport down to Corpus if that forecast verifies. And then you would see a huge gradient as far as rainfall goes. San Antonio, maybe only a half an inch to an inch, and then it would really fall off as you get into the hill country. Uh, 
miles are going to make a difference with this. And you know, we're just going to have to stay updated on this, and we'll certainly keep you posted. One of the reasons this thing is turning, we're going to have a ridge of high pressure, so that turns it west, and you see some of the rain towards San Antonio Sunday afternoon. But then it may turn back again to the north as this moves out of the way. And this shows Monday some pretty good rain here. There is that chance there. We could see some tropical downpours. We have it in the forecast now. 89 Saturday, lower humidity, 30% chance of rain late on Sunday, 40% chance right now on Monday. Looks to be our best day for rainfall. And that number could go up. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It is 9.53. It's another cheesy holiday, but it's an excuse to eat burgers. Is this a video? No, that's Sir Tom Moore. Oh, no. Being, being <laughs> I was like, unless he I'm wants sure a cheeseburger. He, I'm sure he loves <laughs> cheese. If you guys want to come back on camera, you can. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, coming up with the news at noon, how you can score some unbelievable deals that may sound too good to be true. There, there's a video, except there's no cheese on those burgers. Uh, plus some other stuff that's not easy to make puns about. That's coming up today at noon. It is Fun Story Friday now, and we begin with uh, a story of a man in Massachusetts who decided to take a poolside nap and woke up to this as Justin and David join us now. Have you, if you haven't seen the video, the guy's sitting there in the lawn chair right behind our banner. Yeah. So snoozing he's, away. And then you see the bear sticking up go. right there. Yeah. And the bear goes over. The bear goes, hey. Kind of like, hey, uh, wake up, guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> <Hello>. Look. <laughs> and the guy's like, oh. This yeah. is my favorite part, though. The, his reaction. Okay, wait, look. He doesn't scream, look. doesn't run away. No. He, he grabs his phone, phone to take a <laughs> video or grab some pictures. Yeah, that would be the last thing I would be thinking about. What my about you, Justin? Do the same thing. They, when I'm sleeping, they come up and just kind of tap you. They really? They run. Run away. Oh. <laughs> we want to see the pics in the video. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say your daughter's a lot cuter than this bear, of course. <laughs> Speaking of pictures, how about uh, this is from Malaysia? Remember this? This monkey found a guy's phone in the jungle, so he decided that he was going to figure out how to take some selfies before the guy got his phone back. So uh, the monkey took some selfies. <laughs> so we found out that even a monkey could do it. Look at that picture. That's pretty hey, good. That's, like in I mean, focus. That's like, pretty good. He's got his face. He's like, I didn't want the flash on. No, <laughs> he was like, let me change the filter you know, on this. <laughs> nature pictures. So, All right. And then him eating the phone. So. Oh, my goodness. And then a super motivated teacher up in Wisconsin. So no one told me school was gonna be this way. I got my lessons ready, but the students are MIA. <laughs> we, we got the clap. We had to add the clap. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have the clap. This is great. This is Paul Miller, he's an English teacher up in Wisconsin, and made this video for his students. He did a really good job, but Mark was getting on him earlier this week that he didn't have the clap in there. We, we added it. Yep. Guys, have a good weekend. Hey, by the Bye way, guys. school's out, so go home and enjoy yourself. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>